Hi, everybody. It's Talk To Me Tuesday. It's your girl, Anja. And I'm here with a truly incredible, over-the-top, so amazing, I can't brag enough, she is the best cinematographer that I know. I've been privileged to watch her work firsthand, making her dreams into a reality. Please help me welcome Kelsey. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Kelsey. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Thank you for coming. <laughs> All right. So before we get started, tell us what that even means. What's a cine cinematographer? Um, a cinematographer is basically the person um, on set that works directly aside the director to pretty much develop and bring to life all the imagery of the movie that you're seeing. So they are a department head that kind of oversees like three other departments, um, the camera department, the electrical department, and the grip department, which is all like lighting and camera movement and basically anything that you like physically see when you're watching the screen, like lighting, camera moves, any kind of that, like that's what I do. So how it's did you even know that was like a thing? Uh, I didn't. <laughs> uh, back when I was trying to figure out what the hell I wanted to do with my life, I um, I pretty much thought, like, I'm sure a lot of other people, that the director does, like, everything, you know? And so it really wasn't until I was actually maybe, like, like at least a year into film school, I was, I originally went to community college. So it was like, I had some friends that were going to film school and I was in a movie and cause I, I, I love, I have a photography background and that's what I wanted to do, but I didn't know what the specific job title was or what the word was. So I had a friend that was actually like, after we saw a movie and we were sitting there and he was like, that's what you need to do. You need to be a cinematographer. And I was like, what? I was like, it, it was like the word just like clicked. And so I was like, okay, so that's the, that's the, uh, oh, here's my, the, here's my co-host Naya. <laughs> she always has so to jealous. have a, have a word. <laughs> um, yeah. So she's, <laughs> sorry. Nah. No, no. She can stay. I love her. I love her so much. Okay, great. Um, no, she, so basically, yeah, like that was, that was kind of it where it was just like, I didn't really know what it was called. And then like, once you really get deep into film school, they'll explain what everything, you know, what it is. But I mean, I, until I really entered into the world of that, I truly didn't understand like what it meant. And I, and I, I don't think I even really understood fully the responsibility until you start entering out into like the real world situations and like there's a lot riding on your shoulders you know and you're expected to have a lot of different kind of like you know I don't know you just you have to be a really good delegator which I didn't you know it's like something you don't think about when you're like oh I just want to make imageries and beautiful stuff but so you're uh, like the boss kind of yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, de you're next down, like the, the like, basically it's kind of like you speak to the director about what they want and like what they're looking for. And like, you, you know, you've hopefully been in prep and done all these kind of like this pre-work, you know, and then you're kind of the delegator that like tells everybody exactly how to do it or what to do or like how to craft everything. Um, and, you know, so it really is, like, a high-up responsibility. Um, and so it's pretty male-dominated, right? Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> so how yeah. does it feel or how do you navigate your way, especially being out in L.A.? Like, how do you even, like, present yourself as being so, a force to be reckoned with? Um, that's, I mean, you know what? It's... It's so interesting because when I first got to LA, I, I, I came up kind of through the grip department. So I was, I was in, which is even more insanely male dominated than like, just like a DP or camera department. 
there's a lot more there's now there's a lot more women that have started to kind of like pop up as camera operators or you know dps or you know in like the assistants you know camera assistant world but for the most part like if you're in grip or lighting it's very male dominated and i kind of came up through that and I, I don't know if it's just my personality or if it's like I, I thought I was like, oh, I grew up with like my most of my dad and my brother and like I can hang with the guys like mm -hmm. I think being in film school was kind of like a, a precursor for that because like I was often the only girl in my class, you know, and so it was just if you couldn't hang then you probably couldn't I mean it's like definitely it wears on you after a little bit but I, I went through the grip department which is like the most sexist crazy shit that you can ever imagine you know coming up in that world and and um i think it was just kind of like i had this mentality of like if you if you you just you have to you just have to keep bulldozing your way through like you can't let these idiots get to you you know and then you can't and i think i i spent a lot of time probably too long um trying to gain the respect of other men you know to show oh, i can keep up with you mm -hmm. you know and like i i do distinctly remember this one time i was on set and i had taken over from my boss and all the rigging grips were you know they're those like macho like gunslinging kind of guys and i was like these are not my people so i was just like i'm gonna stay <laughs> out of the way <laughs> but you know I I was really fortunate enough to be trusted by my boss and he would put me in his position a lot when he would need to leave or go do other stuff. And the first week that I took over, they were just like, who is this freaking chick? You know what I mean? And oh, it was really? like, and I was just like, whatever, I can't. And after a while, it actually became that they almost wanted to deal with me more than they wanted to deal with my boss. So by the end of the job, it was like, they were like, where were you? You know, like they were like, you know, and it, it just felt like, okay, like I can do this. You know what I mean? Like the hardest, most opposite people that I want to be around are still willing to respect me. You just have to put in the time and effort and you can't let them get to you. You know what I mean? Like you just, as hard as that is, they're, they're trying to get to you. And as long as you don't let that happen, you know, you you're know winning every day. Yet. You can have that private moment where you scream and yell and cry or whatever, but like, no, don't let them win. Don't fucking let them win. <laughs> so when was the moment that you were like, cause I'm sure you probably felt like bullied, like, man, do I really want this? Like, or did you always feel like, I don't care what is thrown at me. I deserve to be here. Or was there a moment where you're like, this sucks, but no, nah, I'm going to keep going forward. Does that make sense? I think probably I've had all three of those moments happen. You okay. know what I mean? And they're all kind of like consecutive, um, I think, where it's just like, oh, God, this sucks. Like, sometimes they really make you feel like you're part of the family. Like, you find there are not all men like that. You know what okay. I mean? And there's some crews that really have respect and think it's cool that you're around. Like, they want more women to be involved and, you know, whatever. But, like. And you know what I mean? It's like, I've been, I've been doing this for about 10 years now. And like, honestly, more recently was the time where I was like, it was like compiling of like having 10 years. And then something recently happened where it just like flipped that switch. And I was like, man, I can't take this anymore. Like, screw this. Wow. <laughs> like, and, but it, and it was, I think it just wears you down after a while, you know, especially with all the me too stuff. It's like, nothing has changed. You know what I right. mean? It really totally. has. Like now they sit there and make jokes about, oh, well now we have to go to, you know, the class about sexual, you know, harassment, harassment. and stuff like that. And it's just kind of like, they, they just, they just think, oh, well, I'm not supposed to say that, but. And then it's like, that doesn't make it okay. Like, if you if you know that you're not supposed to say, you've always known that you're not supposed to say it. You just yeah. did it anyway. But, yeah, I mean, it's, I, but I think that ultimately I always felt, and, like, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have a passion that 
I really felt strongly about and that like, you know, kind of over, like, it's not necessary for everybody, you know, but I will say that if, if people are struggling to find a, a direction in life, um, I really believe that the film industry is, is one of the most interesting things. And I think that you can, you can find, like, if you start out on just any, as a PA or even an office PA or whatever, you will find something in that world that can interest you and that will make you happy. And yeah. which I find really interesting, you know? And so, um, Ultimately, it was just my passion that was just kind of like, I love making movies. I love the process and I like being there every day. But I think for me, it was just, it was making, like, I I speak my emotions through my lighting and through my camera work, you know? So it's like, that's the way I get to express myself. So I, I think for me, it was just kind of like, I have to do this. So it almost felt like I was a, a slave to my passion, you know? So a slave to of, your passion. Yeah, yeah. Because you know? it's just like, you you just, I mean, you beat yourself up about it, you know, all the time. And, and I'm sure you do that with dance and, you know, with everything. It's like, you just really have to just kind of keep your guns to it. And you say, I, I will rise above whatever else comes, you know? So who is your support system? Because obviously it's long hours on set. It's a yeah. whole bunch of men. Do you have anybody that you call to be like, I hate my life right now. Like things are not <laughs> working out. <laughs> um, sure. Yeah. I mean, well, definitely I have a therapist, so that's great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, therapy. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, highly recommend. <laughs> um, but I think mostly, I mean, for, for most of my career, I had, you know, other friends that were in the industry and, and they would, you know, a lot of my college friends, like we would lament to each other about, uh, what the hell we're dealing with. And, you know, it's lucky. I mean, like I, I'm really happy that, you know, sometimes I get to see some of my old college friends that I came up with on set and, you know, so that's what is that like, it's pretty awesome, man. I have to say like, it's, it's pretty incredible to like be, you know, like, watch you know go through like the trenches with your friends like and have this crazy bond where you were learning everything and these kind of bumbling kids you know when you were in your early 20s and then like now we're all in our 30s and we, we're on these massive Hollywood productions and we're just like yeah we're doing it like we're doing it like it's really really cool you know and and it's just like and there is also like a, a language that starts to change, you know, when you start to really kind of appreciate what everybody's doing and, and how far we've come. Um, but it's always really nice to see those people on set. And, you know, you, I mean, that's the thing is like, regardless of what the scenario is, like whether you're in like a, you're dealing with like a, you know, not as fun of a crew or you're dealing with people that you don't really like to work with, like coworkers or whatever. Right. Um, the best thing that I like to know is like the film, it's like the, the cool thing about film is that eventually that job will end and you don't have to see them again if you don't want to, or it's like, it's so temporary and it's just like, you can go home and you're just like, hey, I'm just counting down the days. But also like when you're on set for like 12, 14, 16 hours a day, sometimes like you're going to find somebody on that set that you like talking to, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. bound to happen because you have to have somebody there that is your person, you know what I mean? Yes. So, and you, everybody likes to bitch, man. The film industry is a bunch of gossipers. So they just like <laughs> to sit there and like, you know, they like to be like, well, I can't believe they did it that way. And now we're turning around. We were already over here. You know, it's like, yeah. So it's a lot of that, but uh, it's fun, man. People just, people just like to bitch and moan. And sometimes you have fun. You just kind of get to like, have you know and then but then you then there's those moments where you look around and you're like what are we you are doing? living the life <laughs> this is crazy like you know so yeah so what's the difference between going to Chicago working in Chicago and also working in LA like is there just a different vibe is there work in Chicago still what do you think oh yeah lived in both cities. there's definitely a lot of work in Chicago it's definitely a lot more than when I was first living there mm -hmm. um it's definitely made a name for itself in terms of like 
um, production. There's a lot of TV shows that shoot there and there's some commercials. I would say like the biggest difference uh, is, is really honestly the weather. Um, it's, it's really, really brutal to work in those types of situations when you're... In the winter time in Chicago? Yeah, I mean, and the wind, you know, like, things just have to be done differently out there sometimes. But also, like, you're in insane conditions, and sometimes you're in overnights, which are even colder, and you're just like, you know, it's, it can be really brutal, um... And I knew right away my first winter working out there, I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to go. Like, I, I don't think I... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think LA is calling my name. <laughs> I was like, you know, I never really wanted to go to LA, but like, screw it. Like, let's see if it's looking <laughs> really good right now. Um, I mean, that's the thing that's pretty incredible about LA is like, you know, there's, there's pros and cons of both places, but um, you can really shoot here, you know, 300 days out of the year because most of the time the weather is pretty tame compared to Chicago in the way of like it does get really hot like it's about to be like 114 here this week what do you so way to work um do you guys have outfits depends on my depends on my job if when I was when I was gripping I I definitely tried to uh hide my femininity as much as I could at times like at least earlier on in my career I, I really didn't want like any kind of attention um and I think as I've gotten older I've gotten away from that a little bit where I've been like fuck it I'm a girl uh they're always gonna see me as a girl it doesn't matter if you wear the baggiest clothes in the world they're always gonna see you as a woman and so yeah. if you you own that and so I, as I started getting old, I mean, you have to be comfortable and you have to be efficient for your job. You know what I mean? Like when people are coming in there wearing crazy ass, like spaghetti shafts and, you know, and their stuff's all hanging out and like, you know, you're tripping over stuff. It's just like, yeah, I mean, look, I want to be as progressive as possible, but it's like, it's just not professional for the workplace. Like, you know, I don't know. I mean every generation is different you know do you guys have since there are girls like less females in your industry are you guys like a sisterhood or is it kind of like oh I see you over there and keep it kind of moving um there's probably a little bit of both I, I think it kind of depends on the people you know okay. um I think it's definitely become more of a we do try to protect each other um okay. But I think that we're also really hard on each other. Like, you know what I mean? Where it's like, if there's another woman on set, like. She better be good. Exactly. Because it's like, don't, don't make a bad name for us. Like we're here and we mean business. And like, mm -hmm. you need to be paying attention. Do, you know, like come in and be ready to listen, be ready to learn, you know, and like, uh, and, and just kind of like, just, just be it, it, it's 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 so messed up because on some it's like we have to work 20 times as hard Absolutely. as as the men do you know what I mean um but yeah I mean as I've gone more into the the DP the cinematographer role I've I've definitely kind of gotten a little bit more in the comfortable of like wearing a little bit nicer clothes and and stuff like that like I kind of, I believe, like, dress for the job that you want, you know what I mean? And and I honestly think that when I started to do that, like, I definitely saw a shift in how people approached me or saw me. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I like, I like fashion. I'm a big fashion person. Like, I, I like vintage and, and stuff like that. And so when I started to kind of, like, have a little bit of flair to my outfits, like, there's this different thing where people just are like, oh yeah, like, you know, you're, they just start to treat you a little different where it's just like, oh yeah, you're cool. Like they, they, it just shows your. Is that because you're like feeling more of yourself instead of trying to hide yourself Probably. to fit into this I'm like sure. male dominant. Yeah. I'm sure that's a lot of what it is where it's just like, I'm not going to be a shadow. I'm going to stick yeah. out and, you know, and like, I'm, I'm going to be who I am and you have your own, like, you know, this is who I am. I'm here. Like you just show your personality, you know what I mean? And people come and talk to you. I also am freaking 
super tatted up. So that ends up being like, you know, somebody's that's like conversation breaker. Sometimes people will come over and be like, I like your tats or something like that, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. So your dad used to be, I don't know if he still is, but I know he was a professional photographer for Tupperware at a time. And I think that's the coolest thing ever because <laughs> like, I don't know. I just think that's so cool that the little magazines, I'm like, he did that. So how yeah. does his job and his passion for what he does influence what you do now? Uh, definitely a lot. Um, he, he's still a photographer. He doesn't work for, um, Tupperware anymore, but he still does product photography. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, he, he's probably, the, I mean, he ultimately is the reason that I'm doing this because when I was 14, he gave me his old 35 millimeter camera that he like learned on when he was in college. And I I don't know if he really thought, oh, this is like I'm passing on the torch kind of thing. I yeah. think he was just like, my teenager is bored or I don't really remember if I asked for it or if like, I don't remember how that worked. I do remember I was just curious about that stuff. And like, I always, I just wanted to be like, like my dad. So I was just like, okay, like, so he gave me his camera and I started going around and taking photos and it was just, there's just something about it that I was just like, this is, this is it for me. Like, you know, I loved it and I became obsessed with, you know, I did dark room and all that kind of stuff in high school and um, became really passionate about that. And, and that ultimately kind of led me to thinking, all right, well, I, how do I make this into a career? And honestly, I... I watched my dad struggle a lot with bills growing up and things like that. And, you know, we grew up in Florida, so it wasn't, you know, now I realize it, I think it had a lot to do with where we were as well, where there wasn't as many opportunities. Right. Um, but, you know, either way, uh, we were in the situation that we were in and I just kind of thought, I don't know if I want to be a photographer because it seems like it's really difficult to, it's highly competitive and, you know, you, you know, you never know when you're going to make money. So <laughs> I went and did the same thing. So like, in, in just so a different, in short, yeah, like, I was so like, I'm actually going to do the same thing. Moving images. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. That's going to be so much better. Um, but uh, so <laughs> I, I ended up just like, I don't know. It was, I think I went to school, I think really for me, the key was getting out of town and, and like learning, okay, like I can go live elsewhere and there's other opportunities. Um, and, you know, I just loved movies and what they could do for emotions and, and telling stories. You know, I, I loved just being a storyteller. Um, so yeah, I mean, he, he definitely has a major hand in like what I've done. And I think I'm always kind of like, it's funny because on some level, I feel like I've surpassed where he was in his career and in terms of like, just only because I have all the up-to-date information as to what's going on in like the world and like that stuff. But I also like, am in the industry in such a different way than he ever was. Like he was very much in like a product photography and kind of in this very kind of small world in Florida. And I have lived in Los Angeles for 10 years and been doing, and I'm around all that stuff all the time. So it's kind of like sometimes when he'll like tell me on the phone, like, oh, well, like how you should try this or maybe do this or whatever, or it has, and I'm just like, mm hmm yeah. A little okay. outdated information, yeah, but yeah. thanks, oh, dad. Yeah. Or, well, it's also just like, that's just not how it works. Like it's not as, as like, that's just, there's just so many facets of different ways to go about things. And sometimes I'm like, I'm trying to give him advice to me. Like, you should do this. Like, this is what you should do. And he's like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm just like, you know, sometimes like the older generation, you just can't, you just can't get through, you know? <laughs> so, um, I mean, he's, he's really, for the most part, he's, he's pretty receptive to stuff, but he's just in his little world, you know, and it's, a, it's funny sometimes when he'll give me advice about things and I'm just kind of like, all right, like, <laughs> that, might have been, 
20 <laughs> years ago, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of funny though. It's, it's just, uh, it's really nice though, to be able to kind of like relate on some level to him and talk to him about it, you know, and he does get it, you know, on certain facets of the career, you know, and like, it, it is nice to have like, you know, my, my main, you know, long time support system kind of be like, we share a similar kind of career, you know? So how do you get work? I mean, do you look on Craigslist? Is there like a website that you guys go like that all is, word of mouth? It's pretty much all word of mouth. Yeah. It's, um, I think when you're first starting out, um, if, if, if there's anybody watching that is specifically looking into film, look up mandy.com. That's like a kind of an, an interesting way to start where it's like more film centric. Um, and I think it's maybe an easier way to break in, uh, in terms of like, um, like if you want to get a PA job and like, really, honestly, it's like, if you can get one PA job on a film set, then- PA me. Yeah, it's like a PA is production assistant. So basically okay. it's you're there is like every job will have PAs and it's usually the people who are very green to the world. They they haven't quite experienced film sets yet and they're pretty much just the overall helpers of the set. They come in, they assist the um the uh AD which is the assistant director who kind of like is they're in charge of like running the whole set where it's like uh, scheduling, you know, making sure we're in the right place where we need to be at the right time, keeping everybody on track as far as like, hey, we need to move on. Like, you know, we don't have time for this or whatever. Um, there, you can, get a, you can get an office PA job and then you can get an on-set PA job. And most of the time they're doing lockups where it's like, if we're on like a live street or something like that, like, they're locking up the, it's literally, it's, it's the most, I, I don't even know how to say it because I don't want to deter anybody from doing it, but it's like, it's the, it's a thankless job. I'll say that okay. because it's like, you have to deal with people in a way that like, if you're in like downtown or something of any city and you try to stop <laughs> people from walking in a certain direction they're gonna be like excuse me and they're like oh it's for a movie you know it's like especially in LA they don't like that like that they, they're just like no nah, we're not here to you know and they didn't like it in Chicago either I was about to say in Chicago I don't not, know if we were huge they, fans of that either not, trying to get to they class. did not like it in Chicago I did some PA oh. work in, in Chicago and it was like yeah you would you would have people like screaming in your faces but like that's it doesn't always happen and usually it's more you're dealing with the crew being like okay and you're, you're shouting out like rolling you know and like but the thing is is when you do pa work it's an incredible position to be in to figure out what you want to do and which trajectory you want to go in you know because you get to see all every department and you can see what everybody's doing you can go ask questions, you can, you know, like, and sometimes you'll get assigned to an apart, a department. If you say like, Hey, I like this, like, uh, I want to be in camera department. Like they'll bring you on sometimes and have you as a camera PA and you can learn about the camera. And like, that's really the way to do it is just like you get one PA job and you start making contacts and they'll call you again. Craigslist. Yeah. You'll find jobs on Craigslist. You can. Is that safe to do? I mean, it's, it's usually really small, short films or something like that. And, but if you really want to have like a true learning experience, like try your damnedest to get on a larger production where you can really start to kind of get your feet wet and see what the real world looks like. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a lot of word of mouth. It's, I mean, you just have to know people or it's hard if you come out of it from not having school, like you just either have to know somebody in it or usually if you drive around LA, you can find a production. It's like, you might have luck walking up to someone and being like, how do I be a PA? Like, I'm sure if you do it enough, somebody would figure out, they would, they would give you a job. But um, yeah, I mean. All right. So one question um, for you is how do you. 
how do you, since it's a male dominated industry, how do you even date without losing, having people lose respect for you? Right? Like if you date somebody on set, I feel like that can get a little yeah, like. That's interesting. Um, I have taken that pretty seriously. Like I, I've only dated like one person on set and I kept it really quiet for like basically till the job was done. Like, um, didn't, we didn't really want anybody to like, you know, I mean, I find it personally really uncomfortable. Anybody knowing anything about like on set, like, especially cause I'm a girl, like people are like, you know, I feel like everybody just wants to know your business and I'm just like, not really like trying to have that. So, Absolutely. um, yeah, you know, so it's just like, uh, I don't want it to distract me either from like what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, and it is, I mean, I think that like nowadays it's probably less, um, less of a big deal than it used to be. Um, I, and I think that it, it, it's certainly like if everybody's professional, then it's just not a big deal. There's honestly a lot of people that work on sets that are either married to somebody else on set or they are like longtime partners and they work like, I know a key grip and a best boy that are, um, that are kind of, they're not married, but they've been working together and they've been together for like 20 years and okay. nobody cares. You know what I mean? Like it's the, the film industry can kind of be like a, a little, you know, it's like, if you know about it and everybody does their job, no one thinks twice about it. It's, it's really just like, if you're sloppy and if you're flirty or if you're not like, cause there's a lot of guys on set that are super flirty and they get really distracted by stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and I mean, I'm sure there's women as well like that. It's, I've encountered it less so, but, um, you know, I think as long as everybody's doing their job and is dialed in, then it's, you know, there, it's fine. You know, I don't know, but I, me personally, I try not to, unless I'm like really sure about where I'm at in my relationship, I'm not trying to like air that out. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> do I know what you mean? <laughs> All right, Kelsey, it has been such a pleasure talking to you. Do you want to give anybody any like quick last gems of wisdom or anything? I know you've given us so much. Um, uh, I think just, you know, when you're getting into this and you're deciding on whatever career path you have, you know, if something starts to deter you, it's like, I, I think it's okay to always, always have a backup plan and to have your hands in different, different pots. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to put all your eggs in one basket. Like, I think you should try different things and have, you know, when you're in an industry that is so dependent upon like it's very freelance you know and and you know you never know when you're going to have a job and when you're not you need to have some kind of mental security of knowing that you have a backup plan or you know things like that um but also just be really realistic with yourself about what you can handle and what you're willing to put your mind and body through and and you know don't don't overdo it <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Do you guys, do you, do you guys, do you want them to follow you anywhere social media wise? Sure. I mean, if anybody's interested, my Instagram is, uh, Kelsography. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I post my work on there and I'm, I'm going to attempt to try to do some more like behind the scenes, like how to do this and that kind of stuff. So we'll see if I actually get around to it. <laughs> Well, you guys, I always put it right down here so you can totally find her. She's amazing. Like I said, she's my friend. <laughs> Thank you so much again for coming to talk to me Tuesdays. I appreciate you. Thank you. You guys, you've been walking, watching Talk to Me Tuesdays. It's your girl, Andra. You can find me at It's Your Girl, Andra. Once again, It's Your Girl, underscore A-N-J-A. That's right. All right. Bye, everybody.